Hi, it's time for a new video. I need a way to control a lot of functions with only two buttons for a project that I'm working on for someone. And because there were a few requests in the comments on how to do this, I decided to make a clip and show you my way of achieving this goal. I've done four sketches. For first one, uh, with, only the, uh, with only the buttons. Second one, with the buttons and the small OLED display with resolution of 128 by 32 pixels with SSD 3006 chipset. The third one, um, I replaced the two buttons with a rotary encoder with a built-in switch and the fourth one uh, with a rotary encoder and a small OLED display. It's practically a menu with four options, going forward with the selection, going backwards with the selection, applying the new selected function and the fast way to reset the running function and also the new selected function. So let's see the first sketch in action and then we'll go through the code. Let's open the serial monitor and here we have the first button and the second button. The first button is used for going forward with the selection. If we hold it uh, for a half of second, 500 milliseconds, we go backwards. And the second button is used for applying the new selected function. Let's say we select function number eight and hit apply. And for the fourth option, the reset, we can hold, we must hold the both buttons for one second and a half. So, and now the selected function and the current function are back to zero. Now let's see some examples. For the first function, we use this LED strip to increase each LED, to light up each LED with the selected function. So, as long as I'm increasing the selected function, my LED lights up. This is a good way to create a, a physical indication where are you in the menu. The second example, um, we change the color of this strip with the selected function. In the third example, we change the brightness. In the fourth example, we are just running the night lights, night rider lights. In the fifth example, we are doing a rainbow. In the sixth, we are doing the rainbow with the glit glitter effect. Seven example only the glitter and in the eight ninth and ten examples we don't have anything i think you get the idea okay now let's go quickly through the code first we include the fast led library we define um, the number of leds in our strip we start the instance for the strip. Here are some variables uh, used for the examples that we are running in the functions. Uh, we set the input pins. Um, we set up some variables for holding the button states and also the delays for uh, going backwards for resetting the current function and the selected function and also for resetting the selected function that was not applied. Here we are setting um, the total number of functions. In our case is 10, but you can have how many you want. We are setting the variable for current function and the selected function. And be aware by changing this to um, a specific function, you will have a default function that will run on startup. Here we are setting up the variables for holding the time then the previous time for going backwards and the reset and also for resetting the function um, that was not applied. In void setup, 
we start the serial begin for debugging purposes. We define the um, pin mode for the two pin for the two buttons. Uh, we define the pinout for the LED strip in the examples. We turn off the LED strip and then we send the data to the LEDs. In void loop, we have another void function um, for the buttons and changing the functions. And after that, we have the function that we can run after we select them. These are only the examples, but you can put here whatever you want. And if you want more than 10 functions, don't forget to add at the finish. The main reason that I used another void function to read the buttons and change the functions is so you can use in void loop function non-blocking delays, but also to be able to read the input buttons. So, first of all, we read the two buttons and then if button one was pressed, we keep track of the current time and also the previous time used to reset the selected function that was not applied. After that, we check to see if button two was pressed and if it was pressed, then we check if the time that would need to reset the selected function and the current function has passed and if it has passed then we reset the selected function and the current function we print to the serial monitor and after that we reset the states so no other function will run if the button was not pressed then we set the states for the button one if the 500 milliseconds has passed if not, we set the state to go forwards. If the time has passed, then we set the state to go backwards. After that, if the state to go forward is met, then we increase the selected function. We check if the selected function is higher than the total number of function. And if it is, then we set it back to zero to go back from the beginning. We set the state to zero and after that we serial print it. If the state for going backwards is met, then we decrease the selected function. We check to see if the function, if the selected function is smaller than zero. And if it is, we go back to the total number of function, in this case 10. After that, we set the state to zero and print to serial monitor. If the state for the button one is zero, then we only keep track of the current time and the previous time used to go backwards or reset option. After that, we check the state for the button two and if the button two was pressed, then we set the state. If the state of the button two is one, then we serial print, we apply the selected function to the current function we serial print again with the new values and then we set the state to zero. After that, we check to see if the time for resetting the selected function is met and if the 10 seconds has passed, then we reset the new selected function that was not applied. After that, we serial print and that's all. Now, let's upload the second sketch and put in the display and see it in action. Okay, now let's see the second sketch in action. Here we have the tiny display. And we can see the selected function that we are changing. And now we are applying the change or go backwards and now we reset. Oh. 
let's do the first example. And that's it. And if we change the selected function, but not applied it for 10 seconds, then it will go back to the running function. Now let's see the code. Now, for the second sketch with the display, the only modification are we included the one wire library from the Arduino IDE, we included the other fruit mm -hmm. library for the chipset that the LCD display has, in this case SSD 1306, we defined the resolution of the LCD. The reset pin is a must for this library, but in our case, with this display, we don't need it. So we set the um, reset pin to the Arduino reset pin, that is minus one. We set the constructor for the display with the screen dimensions, the one wire library and the reset pin. And we are setting up the variable to know how many times we need to update the display. After that, in the void function for the buttons and changing the function, in the reset function, we update the display and we set the number to update the displays. After that, in each function that we change the state for the buttons, we set how many times to update the display and in state one of button two, we update the display with the function set and set how many times to update the display. And after that, after the reset function of the selected function that was not applied, we have a function that will update the display how many times we set it earlier to be updated. And in this function, we update the display. After that, we decrease the number of updating the display. To be able to update the display with only one line of code, I made a new void function, which takes up five arguments. If the display will update or clear, which font size I will use from what pixel to start on the column, from what pixel to start on the row, and what is the text that I want to print to the display. In this function, things are pretty straightforward. If the clear update is one, then we clear the display, and after that, we display what we, what we want. If it's zero, then we just update it. After that, we set the font size we set the color that we want to write on the display. We set the cursor to the position that we want to write from. We set the font that we want to write with. We set the text that we want to write on the display. And after that, we print to the display. Now, because this clip is getting too long, let's skip over the third sketch with only the rotary encoder and jump over to the fourth sketch that is using the rotary encoder and the display. And let's see it in action. Now, if you want to learn more about rotary encoders, I will leave a link in the description with what they are and how they function. And now, if you spin it 
to the left, we decrease. If we spin it to the right, we increase. After we set the function that we need, we just push. And now we set it to run it. Let's set first fun function. Now let's increase. Let's decrease. This is the seven function. And in this case, to be able to reset, we just need to hold the switch for 1.5 seconds. Now let's go quickly through the code. In this version, we have a few modifications because rotary encoders have two outputs for uh, determining the sense that you are rotating. We have output A and output B and also a third output for the switch. We change the um, variables for the states. We also change the way that we detect the changes from the rotary encoder and we attach interrupt function because in the um, rotary encoders we have two changes for each step and we must not miss any change otherwise we will not make a full step and by the way we must take in count that per step we have two changes so that's why these two variables are created. The current increment change and the increment changes per step. Now we separated a little bit how we detect the changes. First of all, the void loop for changing the function will now detect only the rotary switch state and we have another void loop, void function, that will detect the rotary change. Either it's going to the left, either it's going to the right. Everything is commented, so I think it would be very easy to understand it. Now, the rest is basically the same as the second sketch, where we detect the change and then update the display, and in the void loop, we react to the current function that we are changing. So, as in all videos, details and download link are in the description. Everything is commented, so it should be very easy to understand and learn. Hope you liked this tutorial, and if you did, please like, share and subscribe, because that will help me in making more videos like this. Thanks.